containment breach. We've had a major containment breach. God. Oh my God. The security system appears to be malfunctioning. Seal the base, Campion. Is the main gate still open? Shut it. Yes, sir. We're dying like flies down here. Use the manual gate override, Campion. Do it now. Do it now. Sally, baby, we're fine. Campion, this is a code red. We've lost one of the bugs. Repeat, we've lost one of the bugs. You have to close the gate.
right, coming up next, we got Kathy Cayman Goldmark, America's new country sweetheart. Sure wish she was my sweetheart. Oh, why don't you listen to me, old man? I've been listening to you more than 20 years now, ain't I? <laughs> All that wisdom and I ain't rich yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, if you learn some simple economics. Uh oh, old man Vic thinks simple economics is some new breed of virus. Hey, ain't you ignorant? I think licking the glue off the back of all them food stamps has finally done something to your brain. Well, I gotta feed your daughter, don't I? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shut up the pumps. Hey! You don't think he did that to his face falling out of the car, did you? I doubt it. Hey. Hey. Just take it easy now. Calm down. Pat! Phone rescue services in Braintree now! Hurry up, go on! Just take it easy, friend. It's gonna be all right. Just lie still now. It's all right. Ten minutes to be here. Ten minutes. My wife and my baby are sick. They need help. Help my wife and my baby are sick. They need help. Okay, Mister. They're fine. You just want to sit right there. The ambulance is on its way. We didn't get out in time after all. Just try to rest yourself, okay? Just take it easy now. Eight malfunction, otherwise we'd have died in the compound. Project Blue. Well, he's right to the side, Stu. He's going to jump. Put your head down. Come on. But I told you I ain't got time to throw a line over that dog's head. You find me now. God, you got any idea? Maybe it's fruit poisoning. You know, he's, he's got California plates here. Maybe he's got some bad chow with a roadside stand or something. I hope you're right. This is a caller back in 58 down there in the gallows. This is what it looks like. Sally and the baby, they were, they were six to South Lake City, but I felt fine till this morning. And then, but are you sure, Sally, my baby, you okay? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> there was a man with us some other time. He was, Dark man. He, he, I, was, I was looking through the rearview mirror and I'd see him just sitting there grinning at me. I thought I could outrun him. <laughs> Get out on the dark man. General Starkey, sir. Close the door and drop the bow in. Yes, sir. They killed him in a hurry down there. Telemetry suggests even the ones that managed to get their respirators on died within 12 minutes. The rest of them were gone in five. You believe that? Do I have a choice? 
No. Apparently none of us do. It's nothing but a souped-up version of the flu. Herbert huh. Denninger of the National Disease Control Center, the Pentagon's bright boy of the week, says once we find Campion, we'll know if it's actually going to jump to the outside. He says it'll probably mutate, but that's not going to help the people that catch it. Listen, General, I have what might be something... It'll just take them longer to die, that's all. Most people are going to think they've got the plain old non-lethal flu right up to the very end. And that's the biggest break we've had so far. Well, because a gate malfunction and some glorified TV repairman got his family and ran for the hills. I'd like to get that guy and string him up. We found him. We located Campion. Crash landed at a gas station on the outskirts of a one stoplight town in East Texas. He made it halfway across the country. How'd he do that? I don't know. But the important thing is right now we got a shot at containing this. Is he dead or alive? He's dead. Oh, God, Dennis just says this stuff has a communicability level of over 99%. You understand what that means? Any chance we had of containing it went by the boards when Campion bought his first takeout hamburger. We can't think that way, Billy. Yeah, you're right. Of course you are. What about the rest of his family? They're dead, sir. Contact with townspeople was minimal. That doesn't matter. We gotta shut that town down, lock it up, dig a moat around it. That operation's already on the launching pad, sir. What kind of cover did you come up with? Anthrax. New strain. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, it's a new one, all right. It's real new. It's very good at its job, too. Too good. Well, it's bad, General, but it could be worse. <laughs> How's that? What's the name of this town? Arnett. Arnett, Texas. Well, hey, man, it's up. Cold got you down? Chills? Fever? Sounds like you need a buddy. Flu buddy. Fast acting flu buddy. Available at pharmacies everywhere. Flu buddy. And now, let's get back to the Lone Star Matinee movie. State patrol, Hap. Look like your cousin Joe Bob. Hey, Joe Bob. Want me to fill her up for you? No, sir, I come by on other business. Was that old geezer here last night when that guy took out your pumps? Vic, he's here just about every night. And maybe he ought to hear this too. Hear what? There's strangers crawling all over Braintree. It's supposed to be U.S. Health Service guys, but they came in a C-5A transport plane and they look like regular army to me. And then there's been three more big transport planes land over at Starland in Arkansas since noon. It was, Carter. I knew it was. I don't know nothing about that. I'll tell you one thing, though. If the feds are thinking about a quarantine, then you might have a little bit more to worry about than cholera. I just thought you ought to know what's stirring in the weeds, Hap. If any of them other old boys that were here last night come by, you ought to pass the word along to them. Just don't mention my name. <coughs> you ought to take care of that old timer. Them summer coals are the worst. <laughs> What if it ain't a cold? What if I got whatever he had? That, that guy last night? Oh, it's probably just the sniffles, that's all. <laughs> Maybe I ought to close up the station for the rest of the day. Call the other fellows and see how they're feeling. Might not be a bad idea. Army traffic on uh, State 17 westbound in the direction of Arnett. You heard anything about that? Bye. Please advise if you've been anywhere near Arnett today. Bye. <coughs> uh, negative base. I've been over by the Arkansas state line all day. Well, that's fun. 
Suggest you let the army mind their business and you mind yours, Unit 16. Bye. Well, you don't have to be so grouchy about it, Cynthia. Unit 16, over and out. sir. He was at the station. Sounds like you're having a busy day. Dr. Herbert Dellinger, Mr. Redmond, will you come with us? Hey, want to get your hand off my arm, Holmes? He was one of the men who had direct contact with Campion. Put him in the back of the truck. If he resists... I ain't gonna resist. Country don't mean dumb. Charles, if we got what that guy Campion had, we're dead already. Right? time today will be three hours and 40 minutes and Uncle Sam is buying all the drinks. W what the hell's wrong with us? Is it cholera? Absolutely not. You'll be getting all the details. When? Shortly after you land. <laughs> I ain't been this scared since the Mekong Delta in 69. That ain't true. I've never been this scared. It's just the ones that was there when Campion croaked, ain't it? Us, our families, people we've been around since. Right now, yeah. What do you mean, right now? Okay, people, settle up. Let's go, let's go. You're on Uncle Sam's time now. Move it. Move them up. Our net's been canceled. You serious? What do you think? I don't know. I think we're in big trouble. And now, by request from Bay Ridge, Larry Underwood, and Baby, can you dig your man? Well, Baby, can you?
You look beautiful. Aren't you glad to see me? Should I be, Larry? Well, I can be happy for the both of us. If I have to be. <laughs> One inside, Larry, before the neighbors get an eye So you know the record cracked the top 50. You heard it, right? Of course I have. You sound black. Oh. That brown sound sure do get around. <laughs> right. So I'm in L.A. And all of a sudden, everyone's my friend. And everyone's got a can't miss deal. So I had to get out of there for a little while, you know? Take a little time off. How's your back, Ma? Pains me some, but I got my pills. What kind of trouble are you in, Larry? Hmm? Ding. Well, maybe I overspent my advance a little. I didn't know the record company was gonna be so cheap. It's no big deal. Except that I, uh, I borrowed a little money. Not from any bank. You wouldn't be here, right? Are the leg breakers any different out there on the West Coast than they are here? Do they give you a Perrier and a Valium before they start hurting you? You're just like your father. No. I am not just like Pop. Tell yourself pissed off. Well, I am pissed off, Ma. Good. It's good to know that there's still a real person in there someplace. Happy Paholi in. Don't lie. I've seen your car. About 40,000. But the record's number 21 this week, Ma, with a bullet. Bam! The album hasn't hit the Hot 100 yet, but it will. 40,000's nothing. Nothing. And I'm not gonna let them make me a one-hit wonder, either. Your son's here to stick around. I'm gonna be famous, Ma. Even better, I'm gonna be rich. Huh? Rich. Bed's still in your old room. I'll make it up. When I have to go to work, I'm gonna be late as it is. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Mom. Welcome home, Larry.
this is interesting. Now watch this. Damn quick. Uh, the only two left from the gas station are Bruett and Redmond, right? Yes, Bruett's critical and sinking fast, which leaves only Redmond, who's not even sick. <laughs> now, how in God's name is that possible? I don't know. We're going to find out. We have to find out. And soon, we will. I think. Hi, Fran. Hi, Harold. Thanks, Daddy. Don't mention it, sweetheart. I brought you something. Oh, you did? Oh. Oh, is that you? Uh, of course, Everleaf is just a small literary magazine. Small but prestigious. And they only pay in contributors' copies. Look, Daddy, we know a published writer. How about that? Oh, my poem is called The Crush Rose. Uh-huh. I marked it for you. I, I actually sent in three, but of course their space is very limited. Uh-huh, well, Harold, I'm gonna read this just as soon as I get a chance. Thanks. In the meantime, congratulations. Thank you. I had another reason for stopping by as well. Oh? Yeah. Uh, I was wondering if you would care to accompany me to the, the Railroad Cinema this Friday in Booth Bay. Oh. They're having a Bergman festival. I've always found cries and whispers to be especially moving. Well, you see, Amy and I already decided to go to an REM concert in Portland, so... Sorry. Oh, well, maybe some other time. Yeah. Harold, I'm sure you'll find somebody to go with. You know, maybe somebody even your own age. I I mean, I, I didn't mean that. It, Harold, I, I really... No, don't worry about it. It's okay. No. I understand, really. I hope you enjoy the poem. I will. And the rest of the magazine, of course. Listen, Harold, why don't you stay and have some iced tea or something? No, thanks. I'm actually in sort of a hurry. I really handled that great, didn't I? Considering that Harold Landis had a crush on you since he was nine years old, yeah, I think you did okay. <laughs> well, let me see that. I have stridden the fuming way of sun-hammered tracks and savage hobo jungle. Stop! Stop! Granny, are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm the object of a young poet's unrequited love. What else could a girl want? You, uh, you and Jess have not a fight. I haven't seen much of him this summer. Well, actually, Jess and I have decided to spend some time apart. Oh. It's, uh, it's like that, isn't it? Yeah, just like that. Come here. Give the old man a hug. Uh -huh. 
What about you? How are you doing? Well, I'm fine. Fine. I, I woke up this morning. I'm missing your mother, so I came out here. After seven years, there's a lot of places in the house where she ate, but this ain't one of them. <laughs> uh, sometimes when I'm out here yanking weeds, I can almost see her. I love you, Daddy. <laughs> I love you, too. <laughs> Although I resigned myself to losing you to Harold Alderson. No! <laughs> 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 and how are you today, Mr. Redmond? Well, we're just going to do a few routine tests. If I could have no, your no, arm. No, no, I, I won't be doing any more tests. Please, Mr. Redmond, it's just your blood pressure. Doctor's No, orders. I want to talk to a doctor. I want to talk to a doctor in person. Well, I'm sure that you will be talking to a doctor very soon. Yeah, I'm sure I will, too. No more tests! I'm sick Mr. of it! Mr. Redmond, if... Hey! I think you'd better get in there, don't you? Say, if it isn't the man with the little clipboard and the armed escort. No, 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 no. We don't shake hands here. Just a precaution. Hmm. A precaution? Uh-huh. Patty Greer says you've given her quite a bit of trouble. She's quite upset. Well, that makes two of us. Being hijacked by a bunch of government sons of bitches in spacesuits does that to me every time. So if you don't want to see how quick I can rip a hole in that thing before you can get out of here, you better give me a little information. You tell me why I'm not sick. Mr. Redmond, I, I hardly think... Talk to me, damn it! I, I'm sorry, but you... <gasps> Mr. Redmond, be reasonable. Just get out of here, you little weasel. You send me someone who'll give me some answers. I don't think you quite appreciate your position, Mr. Redmond. You're wrong about that. I do. Go on, get out. Hurt him, are we right? Quiet down, Nick. Get in! What the hell are you waiting for? Next time I yell, friend, you're gonna pay attention, I guarantee it. Hold him, hold him, hold the sucker! Oh! with him, he's gonna be singing the battle hymn of the Republic. Sucker almost ruined my favorite shirt. I'm gonna mess him up. Stop it, Ray, you killing it. Right car! No! Hit the sucker!
could hear. I could talk. He walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. I can hear. I can talk. I know, Nick. Praise God. How do you know my name? Come to me in a dream, I reckon. Is this a dream? Well, mayhap it is, mayhap it ain't. <laughs> Who are you, ma'am? Abigail Fremantle. But folks around these parts just call me Mother Abigail. I'm 106 years old, and I still make my own bread. I've been living right here in Hemingford Home, Nebraska, all my life. You come see me, Nick. You and all your friends. You got to hurry, though. Some people have even taken to wearing protection on the streets. Why are you wearing this mask, sir? I don't know, just feel safer. Okay, thank you. Katie, the folks at the Atlanta Disease Control Center told me that these masks wouldn't stop a flu germ with a hangover. Jim. So I guess we can thank the uh. stars that this super flu is just another one of those urban I don't know about all those people down in Texas, but you sure sound like you got a dose of the flu, Johnny. You better let me take a listen. Forget that. Oh, come on. You know how hot it makes me when you take your shirt off. <laughs> when I was a boy, we caught ourselves a mountain lion back up in the hills. We shot it and dragged it back to town. What was left of that critter when we got home was the sorriest looking sight I've ever seen. You the second sorriest boy. I'm gonna get somebody to take his shirt off before I go home tonight. It's okay, son. I'm a doctor. I'm also the guy who damn near ran you over. You got a name, Babaluga? What the hell? It means that he's deaf and dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That hurt? Okay. If you're deaf and dumb, how the hell am I gonna find out what happened to you tonight? Can you read lips, Babaluga? Well, thank God for small favors. Now, you tell me this. Would you know the three boys that jobbed you if you seen them again? What? One of them had a ring like that? Uh-oh. Oh, man. That's a fraternity ring, my silent friend. And the only two people around here who have them are our esteemed sheriff and Ray Booth, our town bad boy. <laughs> the sheriff here married Ray's baby sister. 
Janie's gonna just love this. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Chicago, Mr. Andrews. It's a veritable hotbed of <laughs> southern hospitality. Get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many different ways I can say this. This so-called super flu does not exist. Then what is it? Why is everybody talking about it? I don't know why everybody's talking about it. I don't know where the rumors are coming from. It must be a figment of the press's imagination. I don't know why I'm up here answering these questions. I don't have the answers, because there's no such thing. Good afternoon, Mr. Edmund. My name is Dietz. I'd like you to meet a friend of mine. Meet Geraldo. Geraldo, huh? Mm-hmm. Now, the virus your fellow townspeople contracted passes easily from human to guinea pig, and vice versa, presumably. But Geraldo has been breathing your air via convector for the last three days. And Geraldo is fine and frisky, as you see. I'd call that rather comforting, wouldn't you? I see you're not taking any chances. That's not my contract. However, it does appear that there is absolutely nothing wrong with you, Mr. Redmond. Or may I call you Stu? Just don't call me Geraldo. <laughs> I like that. Now, look here, Stu, let's, uh, Let's try to get through this as painlessly as possible. What do you say? Okay. Here's number one. The testing schedule we began earlier this week is going to resume with your cooperation or without it. We got a hell of a mess on our hands here, thanks to that imbecile campion. So I don't want you to get the idea you're a volunteer. You've been drafted. What about the folks I came in with? From our net? All dead. Which is why we can't afford... What did you do? What did you people do? Stu, please. No! Stand clear! responsible for you being here or for the dead people in your hometown neither is Denninger or the nurses who come in to take your blood pressure then who is no one everyone God ah, who knows all you have to do is resign yourself to a few more pokes and pricks well, what if I <coughs> <coughs> Deeds, calm down. I was just faking. Why? Why would you do a thing like that? You talk about this thing in here like you were outside of it. I just wanted you to get a little taste of what it's like on the inside. How'd you like it? You stupid son of a bitch. Get the hell out of here. Don't forget your damn guinea pig. 